Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at unit vectors. Now, unit vectors are so fundamentally important to your work with vectors that you have to have this little subject down to a science, and it's an easy subject, and that's what's nice about it. So, you're going to see vectors represented with letters like I, J, and K. Like, you might see a vector, and the vector is equal to 3I plus 2J. And you're going to go, well, what is that all about? So, really what it is, the i and the j and the k component of a vector are basically like saying the x, the y, and the z direction of the vector, all right? So, and the reason they do it is because when you see a vector and it says, let's say I start a vector that starts here at the origin and comes out here along the x-axis, three units, right? Well, you need a way to specify it. Well, in, in, an equa in equation form, you could say that this has, we're, say this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis. So the best way to cons think of looking at this is as if you're way above the ground looking straight down on the surface. And now x and y are sitting on the surface like this. Here's positive x and negative x. Here's positive y and negative y. And the reason we do that then z is going to be coming straight up into the sky. Positive z will be pointing straight up into the sky. But for now we're still dealing with two-dimensional vectors. But when I tell you about a particular vector, I want to I want to make sure that you know the direction in which the vector is going. So even though this has say a length or a magnitude of 3, if I just say yeah the vector is has a component of 3, well that doesn't tell you anything. But if I give it one of these unit vectors and associated with it, so a unit vector is really just a vector that has a value of 1 in a certain direction. So in this case, you know, x direction it, the unit vector is going to be, we call it i. So you're really taking this length of 3 and multiplying it times i and it come, becomes 3i. Well that's kind of the hard way to understand it. The easy way to understand it is just think of i, j, and k. i means x, j means y, k means z. So if I specify a vector as being 3i, i could be either negative or positive. So if it's positive, I say the vector is 3i, all you need to know is that, oh, i means it's the x direction and it has a magnitude of 3, all right? And if I say the vector is 4j, 1, 2, 3, 4, that means it's the y direction and a magnitude of 4, okay? So now if I put, if I made another vector and I said to you, are the vector is equal to 3i, so 3 in the positive x direction, plus 4j, so here's 4j like that. Well, now we know that the resultant vector that we did from the other videos is going to be just the results of adding those two together, so that would be up to approximately right there. So this vector from the origin would specify the point 3i plus 4j because it's 3 in the i direction and 4 in the j direction. All right, now conversely, I could do negative vectors as well. I could say, I could start from here and I could go negative 4i, so there's neg because it's negative in the i direction, so negative i is negative x, i is positive x, and then maybe down here I could go down below and I could go negative j, so I could say minus j, because minus j would be the same as minus 1j, so a vector that was comprised of both of these would be net 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4i minus j. So the vector that went from here to here I would specify as this vector from the origin negative 4i minus j. So its x component is negative 4 in the x direction and minus 1 in the y direction. So that is so important when you start looking at vectors. You're going to see this all the time, i, j, and k. And sometimes what you'll see it is i hat. It's the 
it's a little letter I and it's got a little circumflex that little key carrot key above this six on your keyboard all right so some people say uh, they might say three I hat plus four J hat you'll hear like that so everybody there's different ways to specify it, but the key is to knowing that I J and K represent the direction in the X Y and Z direction and if it's negative it's in the negative direction so the cool thing about blender is when you look at the axes in blender effect let's look at it real quick is here check out why re one of the reasons I really dig blender is because of the way they orient their axis in global space so now imagine just a moment ago if I was looking at this from straight above there's my X axis and there's my Y axis but if I'm looking at it at an angle now my Z axis is positive up here so now this a lot of times you'll see it positioned like this or positioned like this so here's positive X so this would be you know that'd be one I two I three I this would be one J two J three J like this that'd be one Z two Z three Z or if I was going in negative direction on X it'd be negative one I negative two I negative three I this would be negative one J negative two J and now I could specify my vectors in X, Y, and Z coordinates. This is unbelievably critically, fundamentally important to our work with the vectors, calculus, vector calculus, forces, all kinds of really cool, fun stuff that allow us to do really cool animations in the future. Okay, well that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next lesson.